When you're a child, your mom and dad are the entire universe, and that universe is expanding. Just this week, the lead actor in Transparent, who plays a transgender father, won a Golden Globe. And two little boys in Kentucky are part of this expanding world. Their transgender parents have endured more than most to find each other and to bring them into the world. A mom and dad who haven't told their neighbors they weren't born this way, haven't told them, that is, until tonight. On the surface, the Bowsers may look like an ordinary family. Do we have tomatoes? There's mom, Bianca, age 32. Dad, Nick, he's 27. Hi. And their two rambunctious toddlers, Kai, aged three, and Pax, 17 months. I got it. All right, yay, Merry, Merry Christmas. But in their wildest dreams, these two parents never imagined that they would get to enjoy this kind of ordinary. Because behind her long black hair and feminine figure, Bianca was born a boy named Jason. And despite his cropped hair and the whisper of a mustache, Nick was born a girl named Nicole. We fit the basic definition of what a transgender person is, so... Let me just show you a trick, though, okay? Our children do not see us as transgender people. We are mommy and daddy. But don't go, mommy and daddy. We'll be right back. A mommy and a daddy with a twist. Both were born in Georgia and have followed remarkably mirrored paths. How old were each of you when you first realized something's not right? I don't think this is matching up. Uh, I guess it was about five years old. I remember sneaking into mom's closet when she was off at work and, and putting on a pair of heels. I've always felt more liberated uh, during those moments. I always thought I want to be a boy. I, you know, I looked at boys, I saw, you know, guys with their shirts off, and I was like, that's what I want to look like. As teenagers, feeling trapped in their bodies, they faced cruel taunts. Name-calling and uh, being picked on and bullying. What kinds of names? Um, queer fag. The cruel The general things. cruel names, yes. My mannerisms were more effeminate, and I just did not fit the mold. Nick says he didn't have it any easier. He left home at 17. It was your family supportive? No, they no. were not, no. Wow, so both of you experienced a lot of rejection around right. trying to figure out who you were as people. Right. I don't think anybody can understand no. what it's like to be us. Unless you're we transgender, can, you won't. Unless you're can. transgender, you won't. No. 20 is when I came to terms with being transgender, starting to live my life as a woman, applying the makeup, wearing women's clothing. And is that when you first truly feel like you found happiness? That is where a heavy weight on my shoulders was lifted, yes. But even after struggling for so long to find their true identities, they still never believed they'd find anyone else. Did you ever feel like no one's gonna ever wanna be with me because of who I am? Yes. So neither of you ever expected to find a soulmate, a life mate? No. No, not at all. Each was taking hormones and considering expensive surgeries to transform their bodies into the genders they so deeply believed they were born to be. I had planned on gender reassignment surgery, and I was starting to save up my money for it. I had already made my plan, and then I met Nick. Bianca, a performer at a local club, was getting ready for her act when one night Nick walked in. He caught my eye, and our bartender friend, I asked her if she knew who he was, and she said, yeah. And I said, well, just let him know I think he's cute. And Bianca walked up to me and said who she was. How quickly did you, the two of you, fall in love? It was pretty instant for me. They dated for a year. And marriage, a small ceremony in Georgia. The first dance and a first step to their life together. One in which their most intimate moments require literally reverting to the sexual identities with which they were born, but now reject. People like, want to know how we have sex. I'm like, well, how do you have sex? The same way you have sex. Same way. Right. Um, it works all the same way. In, in essence, when you are having sex, you're having sex with a man. I don't view Bianca as a man, regardless of what she might have. For me in my head, that, that's not what I see. It's not how I feel. <laughs> they began to consider what every married couple does, having kids. Putting aside any plans for gender surgery, they decided instead to spend their savings on raising a family. So Nick, who had spent seven years becoming a man, agreed to undergo yet another physical transformation, becoming a mother. 
It was an absolutely horrible experience. Really? The almost 20 months total of my life was probably the darkest time in my entire life. You know, my brain was telling me that I was one person, my body looks like a completely different person. It was a daily struggle between mind and body. You were afraid to walk outside because people would see yes, a pregnant I, I man. Didn't, I didn't want to leave the house. Nick delivered both boys by cesarean section. They moved to this quiet neighborhood in Louisville, Kentucky. And as we followed this modern family to the toy store. So. Shark? Yeah. And to the aquarium. Cheese. <laughs> Hi there. No, we're going to leave that alone, OK? We wondered what happens when these lively toddlers grow older and start asking questions. What are you going to tell these two beautiful boys one day about who no. mommy and daddy are? Don't, I, I don't know when, you know, when or how or gradually and in ways that they can understand. I mean, eventually the questions will come about. Schools <laughs> calling us and saying, your child said that his mommy has a penis and things like that. <laughs> Better have an answer ready for that one. Every child loves to hear the story of how they were born. And Kai and Pax have a big twist to their story. They do. They came out of daddy's body. Right. We're telling them the truth, and I think that's the most important thing, and in a way that they can understand. I'll push. OK, you push. <laughs> Nick and Bianca have a lot of faith and hope that their children will understand and that their neighbors and school friends will see this family and them as human beings, <laughs> nothing more and nothing less. I would like to think that society as a whole, by the time Kai is in third and fourth grade, will have changed. I mean, it's changed from 15 years ago. Why shouldn't it change in the next three to four years? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. How many people here know that while you look like a man and a woman, Underneath right now, you are still a man and a woman. Currently, the people that we work with after this airs, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, um, with the caveat, this is about to be on yeah. national television. Um, I mean, are you a little worried that when people see you on 2020 that there's going to be a reaction to this? No. Not, not concerned. People will have opinions. All right, come this way. Good job. Basically, what you want America to know is that you are... No different than anybody else. Well, Well, yes. we're different, but, <laughs> you know, we, we do the same things everybody else does. You want to try that? We're the same type of family everybody else is.